Hey everybody, it's Mosquito here, and what I have today is my new saw. Um, well, part of a new saw anyway. I imagine it'll work a little bit better once I do a little work to it, but what I actually have is a saw plate that I bought from two guys in a garage.com, T-G-I-A-G.com. And what they do is they'll cut you a length of spring steel, cut your teeth in it. I have this one, uh, I believe it was nine points per inch. I'm going to use it for a rip saw, a small panel rip saw. Uh, I have it set up to be 16 inches long for the tooth line. Uh, I just wanted a smaller panel saw because I like to do a lot of work at my bench. And I don't usually do a whole lot of really big work, so I just thought that this might be a fun first attempt at a saw. As you can see, when you get the saw plate from two guys in a garage, they don't cut it to shape, which is obviously what you're getting. I mean, you know that before you buy it. So what they do is just stamp in the teeth for you. I have nine points per inch rip, and I'm going to make a small panel saw out of it. I took one of their Distin D7 or number 7 panel saw um, templates and I cut that out, printed it to scale, cut it out, and started laying out my saw. And what I came up with is this 16 inch rip uh, panel saw. So once that's out of the way, I'll see if I can show you a little bit better. Basically what I did was laid the handle out to have the top in line with this line here. But what I basically did first was I came up with a curve that I liked. And what I did was I actually used a roll of tape and just traced along the outside starting at 16 inches. It's actually a little bit one tooth beyond 16 inch, but I might end up just filing that tooth off as part of the arch instead later, but I guess we'll figure that out once we get there. And then I measured up, there's a couple of different marks here. So I measured up two inches, two and a quarter inches, two and a half inches, and three inches, and then based on where the handle ended up, what I started doing was just sort of laying the straight edge along and seeing what I liked in terms of the toe of the saw, seeing what I liked for the height. And I settled on about two inches. Um, the, the back sort of starts out a little bit higher than two inches up here before the nib but it's right about at two inches afterwards. So I'll be filing that nib in later, but next thing to do is to be cutting it out with the rotary tool. So let's get started. All right, so what I'm gonna be using to cut out my saw plate is going to be a Black & Decker RTX. It's a three speed, variable speed rotary tool. What I'm using is a metal cutoff wheel and I just happen to be using these quick release, quick change ones because it's a lot easier when you have to change them out than trying to fiddle with that tiny screwdriver, but should work, I hope. So uh, let's give it a test cut and see how it goes. All right, in addition to the gloves, I do also have hearing and eye protection, and I actually am wearing my uh, dust mask just because I'm always cautious like that. but. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to try cutting out here a little bit further just to make sure that I can get a good feel for how this stuff is going to cut instead of trying to start out right on my line, but here we go.
All right, so there we go. Seemed to go fairly well. And obviously I'm not gonna try and make that a finish cut right off of the Dremel or the, the rotary tool because it's probably not the straightest, but it's actually not too bad. So I'll be going in with the file and cleaning this up once I'm done, but went fairly well. All right, now that I'm done cutting out the back of the saw, I'm gonna come over here on the heel, and start cutting this side out. Obviously I'm going to have a little bit of cleanup work to do, but shouldn't be too bad. So right now I have this set up in my saw vise, and I'm going to go to work filing off the top so it's nice and straight, nice and even, because that would make for a pretty ugly saw. Right. top so now I'm going to just start working up on the front here shouldn't be t too bad pretty much just more of the same there we go let's get it flipped over and start working on the heel all right so now I've got it flipped over in my saw vise here and just more of the same. All right, so I'm gonna file the nib here real quick. I have a triangle file to kind of get started a little bit. I apologize, because I'll probably get in the way for most of this, but it is what it is, I guess, but. So I've kind of already started a little bit. You can see I'm filing at an angle because it makes it just a little bit easier. And essentially what I'm doing at this point is filing a rip tooth. I have it straight up and down over here on the left and then I have it angling off to the right. Eventually here I'll be switching over to a half round once I get the shape that I want roughly in place and the size of the nib, I'll switch over to the half round, I think, to get a little bit smoother transition from the nib over to the other portion of the back. Just making sure I'm not getting too far off track. But also still keeping that side vertical. All right. All right. Now I'm going to slowly start working on rounding the top of the nib. Obviously, I don't really want that to catch on anything, so better round that over.
All right, now I think that's a nib that I can live with, so. Last thing up, I'm just gonna round this front corner a little bit, and then we'll, I think we'll call it good and take the tape off. Well, there you have it. I think that actually turned out pretty good. I think for a, for, for a first attempt anyway, that's something I think I can live with. So uh, just laying the template out here, lining up that line. You have a dotted line on the template that helps you line up where the end of the plate would be and that's how far into the tote you'll cut. So have that lined up and I think that'll make a pretty decent little saw. Alright, thanks for checking it out and I will see you next time. Bye bye.